Greetings fellow Whovians and welcome to Timey Wime Review. In celebration of the legend that is Tom Baker's 90th birthday, I thought I'd check out the debut story for the fourth Doctor Robot, which is also celebrating its 50th anniversary later this year, with it being originally broadcast on BBC One in December 1974. Just in case you don't know the plot, whilst the Doctor is recovering from his post-regeneration at UNIT, a giant robot is causing havoc by breaking into top security buildings and stealing top secret plans for a devastating weapon, a disintegrator gun. This robot was created by Professor Kettlewell, but who is the real mastermind behind this plot? Will UNIT be able to save the day, and will this newly regenerated Doctor want to help? Let's talk about the man of the hour, Tom Baker in his debut story as the fourth doctor. And he just comes out the gates running, doesn't he? So much personality, so much charisma coming out of uh, this portrayal as the doctor. You know, he was, and, and it was definitely an unknown at that point. Um, no one really knew. And I'll get to that in terms of the structure of this story a little bit later in this review. But uh, yeah, it's safe to say that, yeah, you knew straight away that he was going to be a fantastic doctor. There was just no denying that. I know we're sort of watching this more retrospectively, maybe with rose tinted glasses. Um, but let me know in the comments if you do remember watching this uh, debut story as it happened when it was first broadcast back in 1974. And even more interestingly, did you not like his performance? Is there anyone out there that's like, mm, he's not really my doctor, I find him a bit too forlorn or something? Let me know in the comments, I'll be absolutely fascinated. For me though, yeah, he was he was brilliant. And it's definitely not the, the, the polished role in this story. We're going to get so much more um, over the next seven years. And again, this must have been, like I said, retrospectively, this must have been a very nerving time for everyone involved because it always is when uh, a new actor or actress is going into the role particularly as the doctor but he had some big shoes to fill you know he was taken over from John Pertwee who was a very popular doctor and at that point the most longest serving doctor being on the show for five years so again um <laughs> I know Peter Davison had a lot more to sort of have with the seven year uh, run, uh, but at least he was totally different to the, the fourth doctor, his portrayal as fifth doctor. But here, yeah, we didn't quite know what was uh, happening. Very nerving, but um, yeah, just uh, he's, he's good. So, so good. It's definitely the role he was born to play. This story was also the debut of Ian Marta as soon to be companion to the fourth doctor, Harry Sullivan. And yeah, this is um, this story basically is a changing of the guard, really, just as on screen as well as off screen. Um, we saw Ian Marta in the third Doctor story, Carnival of Monsters. So obviously he screened quite well and he was invited to come back, I would imagine, from, from that story. Like I said, it was a changing of the guard. This was the last to be produced under Barry Letts and it was being taken over by Philip Hinchcliffe. So Terence Dix, scriptwriter, wrote this story, Robot, uh, and intended to sort of be like an, an easy transition for a brand new Doctor and will uh, pair him with obviously Sarah Jane Smith and uh, a new sort of uh, male actor to take the burden of uh, if they casted like an older Doctor that couldn't quite do all the action type stuff. So that's where sort of Ian kind of slotted into that role. And even though this is the thing, you know, uh, Tom Baker is Tom and Tom <laughs> in that sort of uh, respect. I still think that um, that Ian as Harry Sullivan still had a, a charming role to play. Um, I do feel sorry for his character in that sort of terms. And I'm and I'm glad he didn't overstay his welcome at, at the same time, because I think when Ian must have uh, had the first sort of read through with Tom Baker or or the first sort of shooting scenes, he must think, yeah, this is not going to be a full time role. He's, you know, a bit of surplus to requirements. But uh, I felt with this story and the subsequent stories that uh, Harry Sullivan is in, uh, yeah, he does have a, a role to play. Elizabeth Sladen, always perfect, is Sarah Jane Smith. 
And I felt this kind of um, story structure, uh, watching uh, the Doctor regenerate, was was quite fascinating because for most of the story, uh, her and the and the Doctor was kind of kept separate. Um, the, you know, this this Doctor didn't really have much of a post regenerative uh, sort of issues. He kind of just ran off, and uh, I did like. That, that Tom wanted to, or the fourth doctor just wanted to leave <laughs> uh, and not help Unit in that sort of sense. But his characteristics kind of got the better of him. Uh, the good nature that is the doctor, of course, he was going to help eventually. Um, but I like that uh, they gave Sarah the, um, the, the sort of role of being the journalist and kind of doing the uh, sneaky behind the scenes what's going on with the scientific reform society and obviously this giant robot how it works how it um, how it obeys its prime directed of not uh, not harming a human and uh, yeah trying to give that sort of um, sympathy role to, to Sarah Jane to Elizabeth Sladen um, but the the most Fun part for me in that uh, in this story is is the ending part with with the fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane Smith meeting up for the first time, well properly since his regeneration, and just that little sort of wink and nod and offering Sarah Jane a jelly baby and she accepts it and so does Harry to join and continue in in their adventures. I thought that was just a nice sort of uh, nod to the audience of like, you know, if Sarah Jane can accept that this is the Doctor, then you viewers at home should should also. I just like those little touches. Like Nicholas Courtney and John Levine was very serviceable as the Brigadier and Sergeant Benson, respectively. And yeah, they, they kind of were just the, the military operations to try and take down this robot. And uh, I'll get to the robot in just a second, but I did love the um, the action sort of set pieces for um, for them trying to take down the robot, particularly shooting this robot at point blank range. I thought, how did they not, how did the bullets not ricochet and kill all the unit soldiers? That that just amazed me. Um, and I love the scene where the the robot gets the disintegrator gun. Starts firing it on the unit soldiers, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, the brigadier gets the the big guns out. Literally a tank, a toy tank. There is no way you can <laughs> definitely not think this is just it's just a toy tank. I mean, that was super ambitious, really ambitious. Um, and yeah, I don't think there was any other way of doing it because they kind of shot it all in video, which made it look really glossy. I thought that was a smart move, by the way, for the story to, to do this all, all location scenes in video. Uh, I don't know why they didn't do that all the time. It must have been for money reasons, surely, uh, instead of just having it on 8mm film. Because the only way they could have probably do the tank thing is just get some old stock footage, maybe. Uh, but then it would have easily just looked totally out of it um so yeah that probably wouldn't have worked but i just love those little scenes and um yeah speaking of which there were some really great one-liners for for quite a lot of the cast i thought the fourth doctor definitely got a lot of it with uh impregnable is a bit like unsinkable there's no point being grown up if you can't be childish sometimes and uh brigadier had some great ones do you know what i would love to <laughs> meet an enemy that's not immune to bullets um we don't need the doctor with this one when he grabs a disintegrator gun and oh there's another one. Oh gosh yeah of course <laughs> this 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 i love this lines um we was talking about the um britain was holding all like the secret codes for all the nuclear wars between america and i think the soviets and it's like naturally britain was trusted um <laughs> the doctor sort of replies well naturally all the rest are foreigners i love that line i can't believe they got away with that line it is so good Really good casting for this story and some great Doctor Who alumni. Uh, Michael Kilgareth as the K1 robot. Uh, last, uh, I think it was last scene in the second Doctor story, Tomb of the Cybermen as the Cyber Controller. And yeah, he had a great present. I'm assuming he did the voice of the robot as well, and um, as well as being inside the robot, because that was a very 
clunky um, costume to wear. Uh, I thought the robot looked quite good for, for 70s Doctor Who standards. Just the feet, really. You can only sort of shuffle. But I like that they gave tried to give this robot some humanity um, in terms of its um, getting its prime directives sort of conflicting with the instructions of killing humans. Um, and it just kind of just... It sounded more childlike. It didn't quite pay off, really, unfortunately, where it's like, I'm confused, I can't do this, Arrgh! and gets destroyed. And, yeah, it is, you didn't really have any emotional connection to the robot, which really probably would have made the story even better, in my opinion. But I did like um, Michael's performance as the robot. Michael Burnham as Professor Kettlewell again, really good characteristics, and I liked the um, that that creator and monster sort of Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster uh, sort of dynamic between him and the K one robots, and sort of like you know he was kind of treating him like a child. He should have been for more bigger and better things. I love that kind of thing. Uh, I don't think, again, the sort of switch and bait spoilers, by the way, <laughs> um, for this story, uh, the switch and bait of him being siding with the scientific elite, um, scientific reform society, I should say, that that kind of just was the, yeah, just didn't quite fit. And uh, the, the ends just didn't quite justify the means. In. He just looked like a mad, bumbling scientist. I, I, I just really loved it. it. I loved the the hair and everything. I think it was just his natural hair. I'm not quite sure. Let me know in the comments if you know. But uh, yeah, it was a great performance. Some uncredited Doctor Who Illuminati's Pat Gorman and John Scott Martin. Uh, they were sort of like security guards, respectively, in different areas. Pat Gorman, I kind of, um, you know, imagine he usually sort of dies when he's a monster or whatever. But poor John Scott Martin, every time he's on screen, he always gets killed off. Um, it was, it's happened in The Green Death, happened in here. But it was great to see them and have these little cameo appearances. I did like Patricia Maynard's performance as Miss Winters. She was the, again, spoiler alert, uh, she was the mastermind of the whole sort of scheme of uh, basically nuking the world so the Science uh, Reform Society can build a better one. Um, but yeah, I thought that it was a really sort of good role, um, particularly with um, Violet and particularly Terence Sticks. Um, were very old school in their sort of portrayal of women, uh, main, mainly being more damsel than distress. Uh, and, you know, um, Terence is very much, you know, openly admitted to that. Um, so it was gl glad that we had a, a female, a strong female character being being in a in that sort of role. Um, and, and it works, you know, she wasn't like too over the top maniacal and stuff. Um, yeah, it was it was a, an interesting character to play and uh, and a fun one to watch. Sadly, this is not a perfect story by any means. Um, the effects wise, I sort of mentioned it a little bit briefly with the toy tank scene and the color separation overlay um, doesn't quite work. You know, it looks a bit more polished again on videotape, but obviously they went for the the King Kong sort of dynamic when the robot becomes 100 feet high or whatever it is and then grabs Sarah Jane. It just, yeah, those effects just do not work, unfortunately. But the main issue, which really, to be honest, is no one's fault, is this feels like a third Doctor story compared to all the other stories that we will see in the future with the fourth Doctor. It yeah, it just had that feel. And I get it, because they were just doing a transition one, so they didn't want to change everything too quickly. But I, I think this was more of a detriment to to Tom Baker's performance and his persona as the fourth Doctor. It just doesn't fit that world anymore that, that was created for the third Doctor, for John Pertwee. Uh, and... Yeah, I don't think anyone knew that until the start of shooting before you know and the read through. There was nothing really much more they could have done in that in that time frame. And yeah, it's sort of like it's as if this new doctor outgrown that world 
and and need to be into the more sort of adventurous types of world which we do get to see in the future i think it would only just harm the, the characters and the and the actors that we've grown to know, love uh, and know over the past sort of five years of 70s who uh, particularly units um you know there were it was going to be a surplus requirement the unit family was was coming to an end anyway um but yeah even more so it would have definitely done more harm than good i'm glad that they had a couple of more adventures sort of like for old time's sake that was a nice sort of touching one but it's uh yeah it felt right at the end of this episode um when harry and sarah joined the doctor in the tardis uh, and um and the brigadier sort of cleaned up the mess it actually it, it would have been really good if there was like a sort of a sad goodbye like even like a wonderful chap all of them type of line just thrown in there just to give that definitive goodbye to unit we'll see you again type of you know somewhere somehow um that that would have been a bit of a bittersweet sort of ending but uh, again no one really knew that just no one's fault i'm going to give robot a tardis rating of 6.5 out of 10. it might sound like a bit of a harsh rating um, because I still enjoyed the story. It's still a fun um, four-parter to watch, but I just knew that I just know obviously going in now and re-watching the, the fourth Doctor and Tom Baker era, there are bigger and better stories coming your way. Um, and and like I said, the uh, what I mentioned with, with it being a third Doctor story, you just can't help but notice it in, in robots. But I did have a lot of fun with it. Yes, the effects didn't quite work, but it, it all adds to the charm in the world of Doctor Who. Great performance by Tom Baker. Fantastic performances throughout the 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 uh, the, the supporting cast, and of course uh, the trio that would be Ian Martyr and Elizabeth Sladen. It is still worth checking out. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts to Robots. Is this one of your favourite stories or where would you rank this amongst the other fourth Doctor stories from the Tom Baker era and what is your favourite fourth Doctor story? Again, happy birthday Tom Baker, many happy returns and thank you for still giving to Doctor Who, whether it's old stories that have been being shown again on iPlayer or other streaming services or on Blu-ray, uh, the audio adventures that you have been uh, contributing to, to Big Finish, the recent interviews that you've been doing, for previous Comic-Con appearances. Again, thank you. I hope you have a fantastic 90th and I hope you get a knighthood. That is definitely deservedly so. But for everyone else, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. Hit the cloister bell for more notifications. Come say hello and follow me on Facebook and X. And do check out my other fantastic Doctor Who related content on the Time Wine Review TikTok page and right here on the Time Wine Review YouTube channel. And as the good Doctor once said, you may be a Doctor, but I am the Doctor. The definitive article, you might say.